Hi, my name is Tyler Boronsky, and you're watching my YouTube channel where I interview professional athletes and celebrities. Today, my guest is Jackie Dallas, who is best known for her role as Jen in Netflix's Stranger Things. Oh, my, no. Mm -mm. Hey, you know how they did that? You know what that is? <sighs> what? Melted plastic and microwave bubblegum. No way. Really? Really. Do you want me to pause it? I'm sure it's just the wrong number. Hello? And welcome back everyone. My name is Tyler Bronski. You're watching my YouTube channel where I interview professional athletes and celebrities. Today my guest, she's an actress on Netflix's Stranger Things, best known for her role as Jen. You might also have seen her on uh, Criminal Minds as Liz Meyer and The Resident as Nurse Jill. So Jackie Dallas, thanks so much for coming on. Yeah, this is awesome. Thanks for having me. Now, Jackie, I say actress in the intro, but that wasn't always the case for you. You had a whole different profession before acting, and you've only been pursuing professional acting the last few years. Why the change? Yeah, I, uh, I actually went to school not for acting. I went to school to be a doctor. That's what, my, um, that's what my family wanted me to do, and so that's kind of the path that I took. So I went to medical school. I finished medical school. I got into residency. I did some research years. Um, I did some training in general surgery, and then I did training in pathology. And I was about four years after medical school graduation when I decided that I wanted to go back to what really made me happy. You know, I wanted to go back to my passion, and that was acting. So I left my job and moved to California <laughs> and here I am. So yeah, it's kind of a crazy ride. Yeah. And it's been like the last couple of years seeing you start to get you know, speaking roles on mainstream television. But even before that, uh, you talked about, you know, you love acting beforehand, but now actually pursuing it, you're doing background acting work for many years beforehand. Um, and I don't think, fans realize that actually a lot of actors they see on television have had experience doing background work before. I know just on Stranger Things alone, besides yourself, Chester Rushing, who plays Tommy, he had like four years of background work before being mainstream now. And I know when I worked on Stranger Things at doing background, it seemed like a lot of the other extras wanted to become actors in the future. So what were some of the things as an aspiring actress at the time that you took away from doing background work? Sure. So, I mean, a lot of, a lot of people approach acting as this, um, like, I, I want to get famous kind of career. But the thing is, it's, it's a career. It is a career. It's just like any other job out there. And you have to work yourself you know, you have to work from the bottom up, basically, you know, if you've gone to school for it and you've got training for it, then that's great. But I mean, apply that to any other type of work, you're still going to start as an intern, you're still going to start as like unpaid training jobs, you're still going to be starting as like someone's assistant, right? So acting is just the same way. The easiest way to get started is to do background work. And that's great for people who have no experience whatsoever, because one, it gets you on a professional set. It shows you how sets work and operate. You know, there's a certain way of doing things. There's a certain etiquette. It's not like what you see on television where it's, you know, shoot, point the camera, shoot it and one and done. No, like if you've ever done extra work before, you know, you're there all day, 12 hours for one scene, maybe <laughs> you do it over and over and over again, like, you know, up to 10, 20 times sometimes. So Getting uh, some background work experience is really helpful when you're starting out because it kind of kind of adjusts your expectations of what to expect from the field, right? Um, another thing that I did a lot of was I started out with like student films, short films, okay. indie projects, you know, um, a bunch of friends getting together and saying like, hey, I've got a camera, let's make a movie. <laughs> so um, some of them are, you know, better than others, but I feel like that's where a lot of actors will start. Um, people who get incredibly lucky and discovered on their first try, that's super rare and few and far between. And, um, you know, when you're relying on something like that, it's kind of like you're relying on the lottery, right? It's much, much more of a practical approach to work hard, study the craft and, you know, pay your dues. <laughs> sure. I think that's a great point too, because for aspiring actors and actresses, 
the day you finally do get that maybe speaking role opportunity, you don't want your first day on set to actually be your first day on a set. Hey, oh my gosh. Um, you're going to be so nervous already as it is. Um, you don't want to add to the nervousness with, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> you know, um, just being there is such a cool experience. And if you kind of know what you're walking into, you can, you can really take the time to like savor that moment and, you know, have, have a different sort of jitters, you know, an exciting, like, yeah. oh, this is actually happening kind of jitters as opposed to like, oh my gosh, like, what am I doing here? Do these guys know that I don't know what I'm doing? <laughs> Most definitely. And speaking of one of your first, you know, first speaking roles on television was on uh, Netflix's Stranger Things season one. But, uh, I do think people forget Stranger Things was not this hype show before season one. And it just kind of became that phenomenon later where it seems like actors or honestly just fans now try to have some sort of involvement with the show any way they can. What was the audition process like for you to get that role? So it was a taped audition. Um, it films in Atlanta. I'm based out of California. Um, so I got an audition through my agent and he is he's wonderful. I've had several auditions with him and, you know, some of them are near misses and some of them are, you know, you get to the callback or you get to the pin stage and then it doesn't work out. So this came in just like any other audition. Um, I had never heard of the show before. Hadn't happened yet. Um, I think it was even a code name for the show for a period of time. I think it was filming under a different, uh, like a, I don't know, a code name. Um, the Duffer brothers were relatively new to the scene. It was just a bunch of kids. And I was like, all right, well, let's just go for it. You know, whatever. It's, it's a tiny little scene. Um, did the taped audition. They got back to me and said, Hey, you know, we liked your, we liked your audition. Let's give you a couple of adjustments. Have you do like a taped callback. They sent me sides from a different scene that Mr. Clark was in to see what my interpretation of his character would have been is what I'm assuming. Okay. If, like, I would have jived with him, if that makes any sense. Sure, see if the chemistry works. Right, 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 right. And also just, you know, to see about, um, I don't know, what direction I take, I guess. Like, my, my versatility as an actor. <laughs> so I sent in my revised callback tape, and I sent in my Mr. Clark audition. And, like, I don't know, a couple of days later, my agent called me up, and because of the time difference, it was, like, six, it might have even been like 5.30 in the morning over here. Because <laughs> it would have been like 8.39 over there. And so he calls me and I'm like, oh my gosh, my phone is ringing, what's going on? And he's like, you booked your role, you booked your first role. And I was so excited. It was like, I had to pinch myself that I wasn't still dreaming, you know? <laughs> so how quickly then did you have to go to Atlanta? Yeah, so I, I actually, I remember I did the audition. It was before Christmas break. Um, and another little funny part of this was I was actually at my parents' house when I did the callback tape okay. in Florida. My parents live in Florida, so I was on the right coast, but I was not set up for like a taped audition. <laughs> I didn't have my backdrop. I didn't have my camera. I didn't have my lights. I didn't have anything. So you should have seen me, me and my sister, we just finagled like a king sized bed sheet and we just like tacked it to the wall and she's like holding the phone on top of it like a chair trying to hold it steady reading me the lines so we, we totally finagled this um callback audition but once I got the call for it we filmed I think it was January 6th it was like right after the new year so I basically like flew to Florida flew back to California and then flew right back to Atlanta between like all the holidays so it was kind of a kind of a whirlwind, like two weeks there. It was really cool, but I was excited because it was the first time I'd ever had to travel for work before. You know, it's different if I had to drive an hour or you know <laughs> around the air. It's totally different. But to be able to say like, yeah, I flew across the country for this job. It was really really neat. So you get to Atlanta and you film the scene with Mr. Clark in the living room on the couch. Mr. Clark played by Randy Havens. The Duffer Brothers directed your episode and they're one of my favorites. When you look back on your day on set, what stands out? Yeah, they're amazing. They're so, they're so nice. I was so nervous and they were so nice and they put me at ease. They came over, they introduced themselves. 
Um, during the scene, they, they ask a lot of questions like, you know, how do you picture this? Or how did you feel about that? Or what do you think of this idea? Um, it, it was nice because I definitely felt that even I had such a small role and I was coming into it like, you know, the seventh episode, these guys have been working together for such a long time. They were like such a well-polished machine by then. Um, but even then, like they came up to me and they really took the effort to make sure that I was comfortable and that, you know, everything was working the way it was supposed to work. So that was really nice. Sure. Did you guys do that? How many times would you say you think you filmed that scene on the couch? And was there a lot of different takes that we didn't see in the final cut in the show? I'd say we did that take probably with all the different camera angles, maybe like maybe 15 times, 10 to 15 times, you know, not excessively. Um, we did experiment a lot with the opening of it where I'm supposed to be watching the television and like super grossed up by what I see. Right. And the TV wasn't on, it was a green screen TV. So I didn't even know what I was supposed to be watching. <laughs> I was just reacting. All right. I guess it's supposed to be something really gross, right? Melted sure. plastic and microwave bubble gum. I was like, all right, I can imagine that. Um, so we did a couple of different reaction takes. Um, the initial script said that the scene enters with like a piercing scream, right? It's like a jump scare kind of thing. Sure, yeah. So I did a scream version of it and they were like, well, maybe that's a little, oh, maybe not. <laughs> And then we did more of like a grossed out version and then a more like, like disgusted, like ugh, kind of version. So we, we experimented around a lot with it. Um, and then ultimately the version that you saw is the one that they picked with John Carpenter's The Thing. Was, was it a day shoot for your scene or? It was, yeah, 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 yeah. It was a day shoot. It was a day to night. Um, we filmed on location at this home in Atlanta in one of the suburbs. Um, it's really crazy because like from the outside, it looks like totally normal, modern day home. And then you walk yeah. in and it's like so 80s. <laughs> we spoke on earlier um, because the show wasn't so hype beforehand. And then eventually it is what it is now, I guess, with the fandom. Um, since people are obsessed with Stranger Things when it initially came out, do you remember any initial reactions either by people you know personally or by fans on social media when the show came out? When the show came out um, in July 15, I still remember, um, I was super pumped about it, right? Because like I said, it was my first show and I was like, oh my God, I'm going to be on Netflix. Like I've made it. It was such a good feeling. So I called all of my friends. I called all of my actor friends and I was like, I'm going to be on this show called Stranger Things. And they were like, eh, haven't heard of it. Don't care. I'll get around to it. Whatever. Um, I was literally like the only one that was super excited about this. And even my parents, I was like, oh, you should watch this show. I'm on that. Da, da, da. They're like, oh, yeah, what episode? Seventh episode. They're like, oh, can I skip ahead? I was like, nah. so nobody watched it that I knew. Very few people, I should say. Very few people that I knew personally watched it like the first two days that it came out. And I don't think they advertised super heavily for it. I think there were like two trailers, but it definitely wasn't pitched as this hot new show the way some of the other shows are, right? After like two, three days, I think the word of mouth has started to spread and that the first week, that first weekend's worth of like virality started spreading. And I don't remember exactly what point it was, but I just remember I woke up one day because everyone Netflix is at night, right? I woke up one morning and my phone had like 50 something messages. <laughs> and it turned into this like, oh my God, I think I just saw you on TV. Is this thing that you were, is this the thing that you were talking about? I was like, yeah, like it's really good. So it kind of just exploded from there. And then all of my friends caught on. And then I started getting people that I didn't know off of, you know, social media or fans or followers or, you know, whoever. And they were reaching out like, Hey, this is so cool. And we had like our own hashtag for a while. It was, it was really awesome. <laughs> I think I can testify to that too, because I remember when it first came out as it seemed like all my friends, like a few friends of mine had seen it and then slowly my whole school had seen it and I was like the last one to see the show. It was a slow build. Mm -hmm. It was a slow build. I mean, it was a slow build for like the first week or two and then it just like took off life of its own and there was no going back after that. 
Now, Jackie, before I let you go, you've done so much different acting and modeling work in your short professional career. And I noticed in your portfolio work on your website that you've done something pretty unique, and that is hand modeling. So, Jackie, what are some of the traits of a successful hand model? Oh my god, this feels like an episode of Seinfeld now. All of a sudden, <laughs> um, so I I got my uh, foot in the door in the acting industry in the San Francisco Bay Area. That's the first city that I moved to when I moved to California. Um, and one thing about San Francisco is that even though we don't have as much like TV and film work that's predominantly in Los Angeles, we do have a lot of commercial work and a lot of industrial work. You know, the term Silicon Valley, there's a hundred of different startups, um, big companies, small companies, future big companies, and they all want commercials. They all want, you know, advertisements. They all want uh, posters or web videos or banners of some sort. And a lot of that tech stuff is hand modeling, <laughs> right? So holding phones, holding iPads, um, you know, clicking on different buttons and different apps and stuff like that. So there was this weird like niche demand for it up here. Um, and so that's how I got into it because I didn't have to worry about my face. I didn't have to worry about talking or lines. I just had to worry about pointing. <laughs> um, it was cool because they pay for your manicure, which is really awesome. I love that. Um, but you do realize it's just like any other kind of acting. It's not real life, right? The way you and I would hold our phones to like talk or text or work on it is very different from the way that you hold it on a commercial. It's, it's almost like unnatural because you have to like have the camera be your point of view, if that makes any sense. <laughs> So they have you holding these like weird contorted arm poses. And then every once in a while, you just have to like shake your hands up because your hands start cramping up. Um, this is such a weird thing to talk about, but yeah. So you're like a contortionist with your hands, pretty much. Kind of, kind of. <laughs> it's hard to explain. I guess you'd have to see it. Eh, no, I thought you explained it well. And you are definitely the first hand model I've ever talked to. So that that's very cool, Jackie. I love it. Uh, Jackie, before you go, uh, can you just let the fans know any where they can find you on social media and uh, any upcoming projects you're allowed to talk about? I don't want you to break any uh, NDAs, but anything you can talk about. Um, yeah, so upcoming project-wise, I will be on, I don't know when this is going to air, but I'll be on an upcoming episode of NCIS New Orleans. Um, my episode is episode 9, season 5, episode 9. It's called Risk Assessment. It airs December 4th on CBS. Um, so I'll be on that episode. That's my upcoming TV thing. Um, film wise, uh, we just had a premiere for a horror film called The Pining. Um, it's okay. like a supernatural cop thriller sort of role. And it's my first time being like a lead role on it on a film. So that's really exciting. Um, those, we just had the screening for it. That'll be released December 4th coming up also. Um, I just had a short film that I submitted uh, to the HBO Visionaries competition and hopefully other film festivals. It's called Proud. Um, it's basically um, a little short film about my experiences growing up as the only Asian in a small American town, which was unique. Um, yeah, social media, I'm all over the place. I am at Jack Stallis on Twitter, at Jack Stallis on Instagram, Jackie Dallas on Facebook. And I do have a website, JackieDallas.com. And what's that? Uh, IMDb. I'm on IMDb. So yeah, you can find me anywhere. Jackie, thanks so much for coming on. Appreciate it. Great. Thanks so much, Tyler.